How's it going guys? Welcome back to another video. Today I want to talk about the Fujifilm X100V and why it is severely, severely, severely underrated as a video camera. It is personally my video workhorse and I use it for a lot of different videos and I want to talk about why and kind of how. So the Fujifilm X100V has served me very, very well as a video camera. It does all my talking head videos, it does all my stand-up tripod shots, and it does all my everyday kind of b-roll. And I think it is very underestimated as a video camera, mainly because of its size and shape and design. But I'm going to list a few things as to why I think it's actually very capable and why you should consider it, not if you're going to use this as only a video camera, but if you're thinking about it and need to have somewhat of a good video option. Here's why it is underestimated as a video camera. The X100V actually has a lot of video features and a lot of video capabilities. It is just about as capable as the Fujifilm X-T30, which is touted as a very good video camera if you don't want to have something like the X-T3. Similarly, it has the same kind of sensor as the X-T30, the X-T3, and I think maybe even the X-T4, don't quote me on that, which means you're going to get amazing image quality in the first place. It also has the Fujifilm Film Simulation Eterno, which is great for skin tones and just great overall as kind of an in-between F-log. If you want to record something with kind of a softer flat profile, but not nearly to the extent of F-log, Eterno is fantastic for video. This camera is also very capable at exporting video at up to 10-bit 422 ProRes onto something like the Atomos Ninja 5 or any other kind of external recorder. And that is very impressive because it won't have a time limit or a video time limit. That's where I see a lot of people think this camera is kind of limited by, by the amount of time it is able to record video. But uh, if you do have an external recorder, you don't have to worry about that. But this camera is not meant to record long-term video format anyways. So you're not going to be sitting here recording it for like 30 minutes or something like that. You can get by with what it can do. So in terms of video specs, this camera can record up to 4K 30 FPS and 1080p up to 120 FPS. And now this is actually really impressive, mainly because 120 FPS allows you to get a lot of silky smooth b-roll shots. So you can use that as a lot of like an everyday B cam almost like that, or like a travel cam. You don't need it to be your main video camera, but the video capabilities of this camera is quite impressive. The 4K30 is down resed from like 6K or something like that, so the image quality is actually quite fantastic. Now let's talk about lack of IBIS, because I think a lot of people see the fact that this doesn't have IBIS and refers to it as a bad video camera or a less than capable video camera because it doesn't have that kind of stabilization. And that's completely not true because the X-T3 and the X-T30 don't have IBIS as well, yet they are amazing video cameras. Now granted, you can mount lenses that have OIS onto those mounts, but I've noticed that after using this camera extensively, I can actually get by without needing IBIS. And the lack of IBIS, I'll admit, almost turned me away in the beginning when I was buying this camera, but I realized later after having it and using it that it's actually not that big of a problem. I actually prefer the way this kind of shakes. It has more natural look and feel and aesthetic to the video. So I'll go more in depth or in detail on my workarounds for this camera not having IBIS in a different video, but I think it is very capable without having IBIS, mainly because if you really need smoother footage, you can use the 120p to get really smooth footage, but the weight of this camera also kind of acts like a stabilizer almost. This camera isn't the lightest camera, but it's also not the heaviest camera. It has a good weight to it. And when a camera has a good weight to it, it can actually kind of act as a stabilizer for the footage you are shooting. That is why, for some reason or whatever, I noticed that this camera, I can actually get more steady and less shaky shots than something like my iPhone, which does have a stabilizer. Mainly because when you're using an iPhone, it is very small, so it's more subject to the shaking of your hands. Something I forgot to mention about the X100V is the ND filter. A lot of people underestimate it as a video camera because you can't use the ND filter in the movie mode. Well, there's a very easy fix for this and you do it all the time with other lenses and other mirrorless cameras. It's just to buy a variable ND filter. So the one I have right here is a variable ND filter N2 to N32, 
from KNF Concept, and this one has served me very well. It comes in very handy whenever I need it, when there's bright highlights or bright sun, and it's just a good ND filter all around. It's a quick fix to a problem people think exists. Now at this price, it is true you could get like the X-T3 or the X-T30 and like get another lens on top of that at the same price of the X100V, but I would recommend this camera to you if you prefer the rangefinder style. That is what compelled me to get this camera, is the looks, the aesthetic of this camera. I really, really like the viewfinder and the rangefinder style, so although the X-T30 or the X-T3 are suitable options as well, this one just looks overall better in my eyes, and it can do nearly all the same things that those cameras can do. So that is why I chose the X100V. Um, I know some people out there might think the same. So as a video camera, who would I recommend this for? Well, if you're going to be shooting longer form video, like I mentioned before, or like even like music videos and stuff like that. And if you're going to be doing like actual video work on a day to day basis, I would not recommend this camera as your A cam. You're going to get a lot more flexibility and reach with the other Fuji bodies, especially because this is kind of a fixed lens camera. But if you're looking for a camera that is meant to be like your everyday kind of travel camera that you can get some really, really good B-roll shots of, or if you need some kind of B cam to carry along with you that is very photocentric, then the Fujifilm X100B is a great option. At the end of the day, however, this is my video workhorse. I use it for just about every type of video that I make and it has served me very, very well throughout the time that I've had it. So if you're just gonna be making YouTube videos or something like that, then this camera is more than capable of, you know, suiting your needs. But anyways, that is all I had for you guys today. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe because I'll be making a lot more X100V videos in the future. And yeah, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys later. Peace.